Many of us write sentences with misplaced and dangling modifiers all the time because we use them in everyday speech. Sometimes we interrupt a thought with a modifier in the wrong place because we just remember to mention it. Or we don't include our subject because it's implied in the context of a conversation and our modifier is left dangling in the wind. Well, that's not going to fly on the SAT. So let's talk about how to curb that habit now. This will be fun because when you analyze a sentence with a kooky modifier, it can actually be pretty comical. For instance, Tyler found his phone walking to the library. I'm sure that you know what the sentence intended to express, but as written, the phone is walking to the library. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. A modifying phrase is a group of words that restricts or adds to the main noun. In our example, Tyler found his phone walking to the library. Walking to the library is our modifying phrase. It happened to be in the wrong place, so it's a misplaced modifier. Walking to the library, Tyler found his phone. Now our modifier is in the right place and the sentence makes sense. Now that we've learned about misplaced modifiers, let's look at an SAT example testing this knowledge. Kaya gave her presentation on Renaissance thinkers dressed as Copernicus. Our answer choices are variations of the portion of the sentence that is underlined. We know that a change is definitely needed because at this point it sounds like Kaya's presentation was on Renaissance thinkers who dressed like Copernicus. So we know that we can cross out answer choice A, which suggests no change. Answer choice B suggests that Kaya dressed as Copernicus to give her presentation on Renaissance thinkers, which is perfect. We don't need to look at the other answer choices because this adjustment of moving the modifier dressed as Copernicus right after our noun Kaya corrected the sentence. Working with misplaced modifiers is tricky because we use them so often in our everyday speech. When you get a phrase with a modifier, Read it closely to make sure it's just who's dressed like Copernicus or walking to the library. Now on to dangling modifiers. A dangling modifier is a word or phrase that modifies a word that isn't clearly mentioned in the sentence. Walking to the library, the phone was found. The dangling modifier is walking to the library. But who was walking to the library? We need a main noun in this sentence. The sentence was correct when it read, walking to the library, Tyler found his phone because Tyler is the main noun, and with Tyler in the sentence, the modifying phrase makes sense. Misplaced and dangling modifiers are all about making sense of nonsense. Here's a pro tip. Modifying phrases should be near the word that they are describing. Generally, everything that comes before the comma modifies what comes after it. So in the sentence, walking to the library, Tyler found his phone, walking to the library comes just before the comma and modifies Tyler found his phone which comes just after the comma. Now that we have our modifier rules down, it's time for a pause and solve question. Grab some paper and a pencil, and when I say pause, you'll pause this video and solve the problem on your own. When you're done, unpause the video so we can go through the problem together and make sure you know how to solve it. Here's the question. If asked to name a famous scientist, Albert Einstein would probably be the person most of us would choose. The answer choices are A, no change, B, most of us would probably choose Albert Einstein. C, our choice for the most of us would probably be Albert Einstein. And D, Albert Einstein would probably get most of our choices. Got it? Now it's your turn. Ready, set, pause. And we're back. How was that? Let's work through this problem together and see if we get the same answer. We'll start by reading the question again. If asked to name a famous scientist, Albert Einstein would probably be the person most of us would choose. Who's being asked to name a famous scientist? The way the sentence reads, it seems like Albert Einstein is being asked to name a famous scientist. That's what the sentence says, but not what it means to say. Here we have a classic case of a misplaced modifier. Our answer choice should begin with us, or a similar word or phrase. So let's cross off answer choice A. And while we're at it, we can also cross off answer choice D. Okay, we're left with answer choices B and C. Which one sounds better? If asked to name a famous scientist, most of us would probably choose Albert Einstein. Answer choice B sounds pretty good. The modifier is modifying the right thing. But before we choose it, let's look at C. If asked to name a famous scientist, our choice for the most of us would probably be Albert Einstein. Ugh, that sounds wordy, awkward, and convoluted. Definitely not right. So answer choice B it is. Nice work. Read sentences on the SAT very carefully and make sure that they logically make sense. 
Phones don't walk after all. Remember, don't misplace your modifiers or let them dangle.